Happy New Year's, Wonder Warriors. My name is Bryce Sage, and I'm pretty obsessed with self-improvement. So like a lot of folks, I like to ring in the new year with a few optimistic goals for positive change. My big resolution this year is to try to eliminate sugar from my diet for a month to see what kind of impact it has on my mental health. I have a major sweet tooth. I tend to binge on cookies, brownies, muffins, or anything else with sugar that I can get my hands on. It isn't long after eating that I can't seem to think straight. I feel grumpy, low energy, or just plain depressed. I love you. Liar! Study after study seems to link sugar consumption with an increased risk of diabetes, obesity, and heart disease. But I'm curious, what kind of impact does sugar have on our mental health? I really want to know what is sugar doing to our brain? And can we blame our depression on the irresistible sweet stuff? Before going through with this big challenge, I should probably get more informed. So I decided to meet with nutrition expert Monique O'Coin. Most diets tell us that we need to limit our intake of carbs, sadly, but what does the research have to say about mental health and carbs? We know that patients who suffer from depression or anxiety, commonly they're eating diets that are very high in refined carbohydrates. So we see that diets very high in sugar can actually cause harm to the brain, increasing things like inflammation and oxidative stress. So uh, things so I like- guess that has to go away. <laughs> what happens to the brain on sugar? Well, our brain is really sensitive to sugar. Sugar is the only fuel source that it can use, and it's not able to store it. So it really relies on this constant supply being available. When we eat a, a meal that's very rich in refined carbohydrates or sugar, we see a really rapid increase in blood sugar, and this causes the brain to release dopamine, so we feel really good. However, the body compensates by releasing insulin, so that blood sugar level is going to come down as well. The brain doesn't feel very good when this happens. We can experience that sort of post-meal crash. When blood sugar dips, we see things like irritability, uh, anxiety, depression, loss of concentration or loss of focus. Right. I tend to experience many of these signs Monique describes. I suspect sugar is the culprit, but I can't seem to stop inhaling it. I is sugar really addictive? It seems that it is. There's lots of studies that show a sort of an addictive nature of sugar. Sugar has been scientifically demonstrated to stimulate dopamine production much in the same way drugs like opioids or cocaine would. In fact, the cravings induced by it are comparable to those induced by nicotine or cocaine. In some animal studies that compare cocaine to sugar, the animals that have been hooked on IV cocaine are willing to switch to sugar. It tends to be that these big swings in blood sugar perpetuate the craving. The good news is that this can change. So in my clinical practice, I often see time and again that the more sugar people are eating, the more they crave it. And the less sugar people are eating, the less they crave it. Would you recommend that I just completely abandon all carbs from my diet? I don't think there's really a perfect answer to that. For most people, if they can make really great choices on a daily basis, one treat probably isn't going to be a concern. On the other hand, there are some people who find that it's really hard to eat just one cookie. And for those people, cutting it out completely can sometimes be the best option. It really depends on just how addictive your personality tends to be. I think it depends on the individual. My plan is to try both approaches. First, I'm gonna go four weeks without my crack of choice. That means eliminating any products that contain sugar, sweetener, or syrup, like the obvious stuff, baked goods and candy, but also alcohol, soda pop, and any other products that have added sugar. After that, I'll try to slowly integrate certain sugary products to see if I'm able to moderate. Not to be a Debbie Downer, but the majority of New Year's resolutions do tend to fail. About 90% according to one study. You have no idea how much I'm sacrificing to look fantastic. And I'm really hungry, so stop trying to get me to eat you. But I intend to buck that trend. I'll be keeping a daily nutrition diary where I'll be logging what I'm eating, but also how I'm feeling so I can chronicle my progress. If you have any questions or if you've actually done a sugar detox before for mental health or otherwise, I'd love to hear from you. So feel free to post in the comment section and then of course subscribe. Until then, wish me luck.